Um, yeah, I mean, one of the things about impressionism that I think about is uh, just the feeling. I think you mentioned it as well in your definition is cap the essence of the moment, capturing something that happens in the moment. And I'm not surprised that uh, you are not just a painter, but also a photographer, uh, which is really interesting to me because in a way you can achieve a lot. Uh, uh, there's a lot of difference between the two things. But when I think about the style in which you paint, they sort of... Uh, I mean, it makes sense that you'd be involved in the two. I, I don't know how to say it any better, but it makes sense that you would be involved both in painting and photography. Uh, yeah, I. it's odd that I, I mean, as an artist, you, you, if, 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 even if you don't um, work in a medium, for example, let's say I had no exposure to music, it's often, it's quite common that uh, I would have some appreciation for it. Uh, but it's funny, I don't, I don't feel like a photographer, yet I take more photos than I do any other type of work. I take roughly 10 photos a day on average or something. I think I have, a, actually, you know what, let's, let's, let's have a look here. Let's see how many photos I have uh, just for the year uh, 2019 pictures. Let's see, we have 2018. There's 27 items here. I have... For the year 2018, 32,974 photos, 69 gigabytes of photos and videos. Uh, it's a huge body. And yeah, I, I often, I love photography, especially in my iPhone. There's something about capturing the, the immateriality of the moment quickly on a small camera. Uh, I can just like take it out and like snap it and uh, maybe for a composition study or just to feel nostalgic or just to remember what I was doing in that day, you know, from few years in the future. There's definitely something uh, uh, captivating about capturing these photos. In other words, there is something that drives you to being both involved in painting and photography. I mean, you can achieve different things via these different forms. Yeah, and I think people take take for granted uh, how the, the the spontaneity of a photograph. Uh, most photographs, uh, quality photographs, are usually somewhat planned. A good camera, a specific setting, landscapes, or a portrait. But to be able to have a small camera constantly ready and just snap that moment, no matter how insignificant or banal, uh, there's something that becomes uh, that you achieve in in and bringing something like that into into a lens, and uh, it it uh, gives that moment uh, a different texture than you know having your friends line up and take a photo or or taking some you know scenic tourist photos, for example. Yeah, big time. I, yeah, one of the things that I hate is when people ask you to fo pose for a photograph. And I'm like, well, this is not how people like to remember things. They like to remember things actively and just spontaneous. And it's it's always great when a friend of yours just takes pictures when you don't even know it. Because then you look back on it and you actually feel as if you are, you are there as you're watching a photograph. I mean, there's definitely a big difference. Yeah, uh, I definitely do that. See, take I take quick, uh, natural shots before people are, you know, start to try to act naturally. It's sort of an oxymoron sort of phrase to act naturally. Prompts, prompts me to think as well that perhaps our memories are shaped by the way in which photographs of us were taken. Oh yeah, it's, uh, exactly. In in fact, uh, it's not just that our memories preserve the past or. A detailed photo, but the the timing of the photo, or perhaps, uh, for example, a song you could have written, or a song that you might have studied, or or a painting you did at the time, uh, maybe of a subject, or maybe of some moment. Uh, they all have a sort of a special way to uh, capture that time, not just the memory, but to capture the time, the essence, and sort of emote a sort of nostalgia or longing or yearning or some other kind of immaterial emotion that we don't quite have a word for.